Hello and welcome to that superhero hub. I'm Sam. I'm Matt. And today we're reviewing The Gifted. Yeah, episode three, Exposed. Um I think this ep like I watched it, it felt slow to me. Mm-hmm. Like there wasn't any like bit it was very talky this episode, but I mean, last episode, like all the episodes have been, but I think this one, it was more kind of like, oh, it's talky. I noticed it more, because there are only a couple of, dare I say, set pieces. So, yeah, um, Reed's kind of um, doing his thing with Sentinel Services. He's made his deal, so kind of his thread is to kind of get himself is lead sentinel services to the mutant underground like it was very light about his family like look i screw everyone over i don't care as long as my family's like cool i wouldn't trust no sentinel services with that anyway so i wouldn't have made that deal but he makes it and then he goes and makes contact with the bartender who kind of he, he met at the at the bar when he saw eclipse and like it, it's very ready to kind of sell him out but you can see his kind of arc in the episode you know like it's gonna like is gonna thaw his cold heart as it were because he gets in uh he's in there and he's waiting and then he meets the girl and her kid and like he kind of is like oh like he kind of is still goes on with it and then literally at the last moment is like actually like i can't do it you know what i mean so now he's kind of completely warmed to all the other like the mutants as a whole as opposed to like whatever so it's spent all this time as a kind of uh putting these people in prison and stuff like that and it's kind of impartial when it comes to like the mutant mutant rights and stuff like that but now it's kind of seen it firsthand as i actually i can't do this yeah, I think that this is probably an important moment for its character what, and what we're three episodes in now. They've kind of been building to this throughout the three episodes now. He's fully committed. I think it, the same goes for the wife as well. Now at this point, they're fully committed to the whole mutant cause thing. And this is the final, all the straw that broke the camel's back, I really want to say it. Yeah. So, I mean, the mum, she's doing dumb stuff. Like, mm-hmm. um, I'm trying to, did she like... I think she was trying to like. I couldn't work out what her kind of goal was. It was something to. Uh, I can't remember. What it was something to do. Cause it was something to do with the blink, wasn't it? They wanted her to use. They wanted her to use her powers. But they said no, and then she wanted to get some sort of medical help, and then I kind of lost track as well. Essentially, whatever the long and short of it is, she needed help, and so she went to her brother. Yeah, she went to her brother, and I guess she was hoping that because it's like tied in with all these higher ups, that like they could make a deal or whatever to get the dad out. That obviously didn't work because the brother, as well, he was kind of like he was powering off the kids like mutants as well because like he's been shunned by everyone, so it's kind of another one. Whether it's like <laughs> He was, but in the end, what I thought was a refreshing change was he didn't actually sell him out. Because I thought that was obviously where the plot was going to go. It's even a plot we've seen in, like, um, a kind of, we've seen in an X-Men movie. I think, what was it? X-Men, was it X-Men 2? Where the Iceman goes back to see his family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Family, yeah, right, that one. And they wound up, I think his brother or something wound up selling him out. I thought that was basically where they were going to go. But it was a nice change of pace. Even, even... Obviously, they were going to get busted and they were going to have a mob on them, but I, even the nephew, I don't think he meant to do it, right? I think it was just like he thought it was cool. Yeah, well, he, he sent, he kind of, he was getting the guy, well, it's naivety, in it? Because, like, he's getting the brother, I mean, the brother's definitely going to turn, I mean, you can tell. So, like, he got the brother yeah. to kind of split the statue or whatever, like, obviously, the sister unintentionally by showing the picture of whoever mugging him off kind of set him off. But it's like, yo, this guy's not in control of his powers. He could have leveled that house. It's like, I wouldn't be like, yo, 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 show the powers. Uh, so He is getting in more control, though, because originally the way they got there was his idea was to rob a bank, and they talked him out of it. And so he, I think he took out some, like, 
what were, what were they like like parking meters or some crap like that to get yeah. change out of I definitely seem to be heading down the he's more Brotherhood Magneto style and the the, the sister is Xavier X Men. That seems to be the way they're heading. But he, he seemed but like he, that was a very there was a bit of mess but when he used the power to get the the money he seemed vaguely in control, so he seems to be getting better at it. Yeah. Um I mean <laughs> That his 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 voice isn't forceful, so when he lays down the law, it's mm. not very convincing. But he pulls like faces well, if you know what I mean. Like when he's in the house and they're kind of like, because obviously the nephew sends a picture to his friend, and then his friend obviously alerts everyone. There's like, oh, he swore he wouldn't show anyone. Come on, don't be dumb. So like all the like neighborhood comes round and they're like, yo with their guns like bring out the mutants or whatever and then he blasts the door off like does that power he does that well but like when he when he's like laying down the law like oh let's go out there and rough them up it's like he's not very forceful in his words so it just it just sounds like a kid like trying to shout and it's like whatever so he needs to work on that uh but yeah that was cool like i mean that's some hella restraint because i mean i i wanted to beat the crap out of them guys on the lawn as well it's like shut your mouth man. you know what i mean like if i if i had powers like i'd need like hella restraint not to just like not kill them but like put them in their place <laughs> you, like the kid was going on about it's like they're annoying like um which I guess it was a good moment for obviously the mum's brother because he first hand showed like these people are like brutes they don't they just kind of turned up and are like oh yeah uh, give us the kids or whatever it's like they have no idea they're just kind of very hot headed so it's like yeah it's like people people are assholes basically so and they just don't understand so in some sense they deserve to get battered so i mean it kind of shows the mutants in a good light in this program because it's like yo because they were very much about uh allow it you know we could mull around but we're not going to so there was a lot of that going on um yeah, when you got Blink, she can't kind of use her powers. You got that business going on. So then the girl, uh, Dreamer, I think her name is, she kind of blasts her with her dust and kind See, of. See, that, that's interesting because that's. I don't know how long term that is, but that could really be crossing the line. Yeah, because the Night Wolf or whatever his name is brings it, brings it up himself. It's like you can't put things in people's heads and stuff like that. But I mean, it did kind of fix the situation. I was expecting her to like, uh, like put it in, put the memory in her head, get her to like open the portal and save them all, and then take it out. But now it kind of looks like it's it, right. It it did fix the situation. I get that she wasn't particularly happy to do it, but. That's the kind of thing that the humans and even other mutants could rightly be concerned about. Like you could potentially wind up ruling the damn world if you wanted to with that power. Mm. Um, I thought I found the stuff with Lorna to be redundant. It's like we basically saw that last week. She was just like testing the limits of that collar thing. Like we've already seen her try and hit her head yeah. once. She's yeah, she's being dumb in the sense of like crush the collar, mm. crush the collar, rip the collar off. But she's like all about like ripping the door off and get like why wouldn't you just like be like crush the components of the collar offline, rip the door off? It's like well, why ain't she done that? That's it's annoying. Not- <laughs> it just felt like they weren't adding anything new. No, it's something we haven't seen already. It's more of a, oh yeah, remember this character is in the show, but we don't really want to move the plot forward. Or where. Yeah, so it seemed a bit pointless. And she like nosebleed and kind of passes out, and then the guard comes over and she's like, "That's just sad." I was expecting her to be like. I don't know what to expect from people in this show. I mean, I just predicate that everyone's an arsehole. Uh, what was interesting as well, I mean, in terms of, like, the villain for the show, uh, the 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 scientist guy, 
who rings up Sentinel Services and is like, oh, uh, pass the case on to us and uh, we'll help you and stuff like that. And like the Sentinel Services guy is just about to say w w who and what he works for. Like, oh, we don't need the assistance of, but then it gets cut off. So I'm wondering what that's going to be about, because you got to figure if it cut if he cut him off like that, it's got to be some big like company. Whether, um, see, it's in. I don't, I don't think he is, um, Bolivar Trust, but it kind of, it felt like how people felt about Bolivar Trust in Days of Future Past, like even the, to the sentinel guy it's like no you're a step too far no it was like you're just contractors so it's like right, right but but if to me it felt like even he didn't want to use whatever methods this guy was probably going to use he does seem like one of those let's experiment on mutants kind of guys yeah because that you could see kind of i guess bodies behind him so i, I was thinking it's either going to be the essex corp or um I guess Trask Industries, but I mean, in terms of the films, like it d does, does Trask Industries still exist? I don't know, but we don't we don't even know the the links to the films, do we? That's what I mean. They're keeping that very vague, anyway. Mm. So who knows? So you got to figure. I mean, th this guy. If, I, there, if there's a Sentinel Corp, you would assume there's a bot. There's a Trask industry. It's in the bottom of the Trask created the Sentinels. Yeah, but if so, why wouldn't why wouldn't Trask just put a call in and be like, "Look, I'm passing this case on to this guy." Who knows? Like, we don't know that he's linked to Trask yeah. anyway. It's yeah. just he's seen a lot like it. I'm excited. I'm expecting a big name. I'd be surprised by Sinister. Cause they've been talking about putting him in a movie for a long time. He was meant to be Richard E. Grant's role in Logan, but they changed their mind and this made him some other dude. I don't think they put Sinister on the show, but maybe I'll be wrong. Mm. Um, it might be a Weapon X thing, maybe. Not Weapon X. Uh, what was Weapon X? Is no one. Oh, well, anyway, the people who made Wolverine, Striker, and whatnot. Mm. Uh, Not Striker because Striker was in the movie. Never mind. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it'll be Abraham, Doctor Abraham Cornelius, or whoever his name was, who gave Wolverine his powers. Who knows? Uh, let's talk numbers. Um. I liked it. I thought it was a bit of a step down. Or well, something to do with um, the, the business going on with Logan. You know, the one who made the little girl. Oh, X-23, yeah. Yeah, something to, like an early version of that. But again, you know what I mean? I just, I don't, I'm not sure how heavily they're going to tie into the movies. It's just... I figure it's going to be, it's got to be like a big name or they would have just dropped what what the company was so i mean like and there was a kind of magneto uh easter egg as well do you know when early on when uh she was showing off her powers and flying she was like aurora borealis that's when whatever hits the magneto sphere yeah, <laughs> i was like blimey. <laughs> i loved it <laughs> um I, I do i do think because I, I i don't i don't know if it would be a weapon x thing i, I do think in in the show and in the movies because in the movies it was Striker and in the comic books he's a reverend I think they'll probably stick to the version of Striker that everyone knows I just don't think they're going to put him in this either Richard, Richard E. Grant I can't remember in Logan I think he was meant to be the actual scientist that came up with the procedure that bonded the Adamantium and whatnot. so Maybe it will tie into that if they're going to tie into the movies. It's about the episode rating. Um, uh, 7.5. Yeah, I'd have gone for a 7. It weren't as, I guess, sharp, but there's intrigue in there. You know what I mean? I think the sci scientist guy is like original an original character, but I think whoever he works for or mm -hmm. whatever company, you know, the person behind that is going to be like the season two, like more prominent villain or whatever. Uh, yeah, I'll give it a seven. It was more noticeably slow, I guess, but I still like it. I'm Sam. I'm Matt. And we'll see you next time for more The Gifted Reviewed by The Hub. Holla.